So NZX is producing their own motherboards, at least it seems, but you know, not just anyone can manufacture from a day to another motherboards. There are uh, dozens of different components, uh, interfering signals, brandings, issues, even after decades of work, um, you know, manufacturers, well-known manufacturers, well-established manufacturers still have problems. I mean, MSI, anyone? So picture my surprise when I see NZXT releasing their very own odd looking uh, fancy motherboards out of nowhere. I mean, they do great cases, but from cases and accessories to motherboards, it's, there's a big leap to take there. So today we are reviewing the N7 B550 from NZXT, a virgin lineup of motherboards with an adventurous design hoping to compete both for your attention and your crisp dollar bills. And who on earth came up with the name NZXT? I mean, how am I supposed to pronounce this in French? Uh, ouais, j'ai uh, un NZXT, quoi, NZXT. Ah, ouais, super ton NZXT, là, super. Obviously, NZXT did not start manufacturing their own motherboards. Instead, they have contracted a much more established and experienced manufacturer, ASRock. So basically, we're dealing with an ASRock motherboard dressed by NZXT, which is not a bad thing. I'll tell you this, it is not ugly. Actually, I, I kind of like it. It has a very nice minimalist feel to it. And at first glance, there is no obvious visible components. Everything looks slick, simple, and yes, engineered. Now, is it enough to excuse a rather high $230 before taxes price tag, which by the way goes head to head against some of the best design motherboards um, on the market, such as the Strix B550E or even the excellent B550 Hours Pro, both of which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. Is it now? Well, starting with the obvious. We're dealing with a six PCB layered ATX motherboard, which is exactly what I expected uh, from a PCIe 4.0 motherboard, since it will uh, add some isolation to uh, PCIe signals and strengthen VRM heat dissipation. Uh, but definitely something that ASRock did well um, and that NZXT, you know, should be happy about. CPU socket wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting anything from third to fifth generation of Ryzen processors. In other words, PCIe 4 only processors, which has its importance since this is where our board PCIe 4.0 abilities will come from. VRM wise, <laughs> I was definitely very curious to see what was under the hood. And the N7 B550 has 14 50 amps V core phases, 12 of which are CPU centric. That is a total of 700 amps of power. And obviously, this is more than you'll ever need to run and even severely overclock any kind of processor AMD can throw at this motherboard. But this is also a lot of heat. Luckily, ASRock did exactly what it did on its own branded boards, meaning spread the load over several power stages to limit hot spots. Add to that a rather imposing double stage VRM heatsinks, and we have some of the coolest temps I have seen on a B550 motherboard. With an overclocked 16 core Ryzen 9, I could barely detect 55 degrees Celsius of heat. And surprisingly, this is the coolest uh, VRM I have ever tested on a B550 platform. So definitely a huge kudos to ASRock and NZXT for it, because I don't know who did the heatsink, and definitely something which will impact the lifespan of your motherboard positively. Memory-wise, the N7B550 supports up to 128GB of DDR4RAM in a dual-channel configuration, clocking up to an impressive 4.7GHz. But do keep in mind that those kind of speeds are only attainable with single memory uh, model. If you start populating all of your channels and all the memory slots, speeds will decrease accordingly. So if you have a fully uh, populated dual channel, you can hope to go anywhere between 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz, which is already very, very fast for DDR4 RAM. Staying in the memory and below this very imposing, good looking and well, 
useless cover, we have two M.2 solid state drive sticks, which can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second. But since our CPU fed M.2 solid state drive supports PCIe 4.0 standard, it can run up to a whooping 64 gigabit per second, which obviously is great for a boot drive. In both cases, M.2 solid state drive sticks get really hot really quickly. And unfortunately, there is nothing to prevent thermal throttling in our case because NZXT made the lethal error not to provide either thermal pads or heat shields for those M.2 solid state drives. You see those very nice covers? They're only magnetized piece of plastics, not to say anything else. And they do absolutely nothing but trap heat around our sticks. And, and that is almost unforgivable because if you're gonna go with memory intensive tasks, such as in production boards, like video editing and, and stuff like that, you're gonna be, you know, thermal throttling left and right, and that's going to bottleneck a lot of your activities. Doesn't matter if you have a great VRM with 16 core processors, if your M.2 solid state drive is dying of heat and just ramming and thermal throttling at every millisecond, if you catch my drift. So, definitely something NZXT needs to improve on the next iteration of that board. Now staying in the storage section, worth mentioning the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plugs, nothing groundbreaking here. Export wise, we have our 4 PCIe exports, 2 bachelors and 2 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at only four lanes at PCIe 3 standard, so not really suited for video card. And again, something which will limit uh, the productivity or the production uh, attraction of this motherboard. It, it'll be great for gaming, but definitely not as attractive for more professional production mindset. Now, worth noting, our first GPU slot is PCIe 4.0 compatible, meaning that it can deliver twice the bandwidth than its previous generation, so 32 gigabyte per second. This is great on paper, but only on paper since we do not yet have any video cards on the market as of today, which can go beyond the 16 gigabytes provided by the PCIe 3.0 standard. So great for future proofing, but that's about it for now. Back IO wise, first let me know the presence of an integrated back IO plate, which is always welcome and, and something I really like to see, but it is directly linked to the Wi-Fi card screwed in the middle of our motherboard, which is not a great idea because you take the risk of whacking the cables out if you want to disassemble it. Now, starting from the left, we have a CPU flashback button for CPU less bias recovery or update and our clear CMOS button, both of which are nice premium touches at this price range. Next, we have our HDMI output for integrated graphics, which supports up to 4K at 60 frames per second, which became more relevant since uh, the launch of the Ryzen 5000G processor series with their advanced graphics abilities. Next, we have two second generation USB plugs, two 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, a 2.5 gigabit Realtek LAN, which is a great upgrade coming from its X570 variant, a dual band Wi-Fi 6E adapter able to transfer up to 2.4 gigabit per second on the new and cleaner 6 gigahertz spectrum, making this board definitely a connectivity wonder. And next, we have no less than six 5 gigabit USB plugs, which is different Definitely a plus. And finally, and thankfully, we got our 8 channel ALC 1220A audio codec, which, despite being a mid range codec, heavily benefits from the numerous PCB layers of our motherboard since both left and right audio channel have been traced on dedicated PCB layers. Add to that a rather generous 5 Nikicon capacitors, and you have a really premium audio experience. Uh, I mean, uh, as good as you could hope at this price range coming from an integrated solution, both in recording and in gaming. So definitely a big audio kudos to ASRock slash NZXT for this. Now, overall, we do have a premium, uh, expensive, very well featured back IO, and I'm not gonna take it away from NZXT or ASRock and give them an overall 
back IO kudos for this. Now, taking a closer look to our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of the PCIe4 heavy lifting to feed our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain at PCIe3 standard without slowing down your build. It also means that our chipset is much, much cooler, 6 watts instead of 11, so no more need for a fan to keep it cool as seen on its X570 counterpart. BIOS-wise, NZXT being new at this, I was not sure what to expect, but thankfully they delegated that part to ASRock, and the result is a clean, stable, and familiar interface which will make you feel right at home. Now, moving on to our front panel connectors, we have three second generation plugs, great for monitoring, two 5 gigabit third generation plug positioned on either side of the setup plugs at a 90 degree angles, which kind of looks cool. They give that very Star Wars-y, um, you know, like spaceship propulsion kind of aesthetic to it, which I'm not totally against. And finally, a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which is pure luxury coming from a B-series motherboard. Cooling wise, we have seven PWM fans, including a single dedicated water pump. And obviously this is more than enough to provide a solid cooling, a solid airflow in your system. But I do regret the fact that again, um, uh, we do not have hybrid connectors uh, as seen on Gigabyte motherboard, which would have individually uh, be able to provide, you know, water pump support, airflow sensors, um, you know, everything for individual connector, which would have given so much more agility to an already very expensive motherboard. So definitely something NZXT have to give a thought for on the next iteration of this motherboard. Now, troubleshooting wise, we get our easy debugger to get us through the booting process, which is what I expected to see on a PCI 4.0 enabled motherboard. We also do have big, fat, good looking power and reset salted buttons, which I need to admit are rather premium features at this price range. Finally, RGB wise, the NZXT N7 is rather conservative, which is not a bad thing. It does not feature any built in RGB strips, but does have four RGB connectors scattered all over our board, including two NZXT proprietary connectors for, well, NZXT RGB products. In short, if your streaming carrier never really took off, at least you have enough uh, RGB abilities on this motherboard to light up a cabaret. Now, in conclusion, at about $230, the NZXT N7 B550 is a solid contender and a refreshing product, which breaks the monotonous release of the usual big four brands and proposes a new and different design. The marriage between NZXT minimalistic design and ASRock engineering know-how gives us some solid arguments for this motherboard. One of the best ones are definitely is the VRM, which both in terms in power and thermals has nothing to envy from more expensive models. It has this great back IO, a complete troubleshooting solution, and frankly talking, it looks really, really, really good. But truth be told, this is definitely not a perfect product, far from it, and it actually suffers from one um, very annoying and deep underlying problem the M.2 solid state drive sticks. The fact that we do not have heat shields on them will undoubtedly cause some serious thermal throttling in memory demanding tasks such as video editing. And that is a big deal because it makes this board a very unbalanced, uneven product. You can run the most powerful 16 core money can buy, but at as soon as you're gonna throw a video editing software on this, you'll be in a world of pain. And as far as I'm concerned, it removes it completely uh, from the production realm and makes it a very expensive and maybe even overpriced gamer when you look at the competition. I mean, a lot of people will still buy it for its you know neat minimalistic design, uh, but it's not gonna save them from having some issues memory-wise. So yeah, I mean, it's a great first try coming from NZXT in the B550 platform, uh, but still it has some serious work ahead of it and some real improvements um, that needs to be done before it hopes to worry the bigger players in the market, such as ours or Aces. And that's the truth.